Hey everybody, Darren Kafanoki coming to you from the Crime Couch here today with my good friend Annalise Getz. Annalise is a corporate lawyer, and Annalise, where can people find more out about you? AnnaliseGetz.com, or you can listen to my podcast on iTunes. Just search Annalise Getz, Your Life in the Law. I love that. So, on the Crime Couch, oftentimes we talk about crimes of passion. But there's another kind of passion as we inch closer to Valentine's Day. The kind of the passion of love and amour. What happens though when people get maybe the gift of an apartment key for Valentine's Day and they're taking the next step in their relationship? Are there a bunch of legal things that maybe they should be on the lookout for? There are, and I've had so many friends do this incorrectly that I hope we can help other people do it right. It's usually let's, the first, let's help some people. It's the first kind of major legal thing you may be doing in your life. So let's start with you guys are moving together. Are you moving to his place or is he moving into your place? So the first thing we should look at is the lease. Mm. Okay, this is your this is your legal rights to stay in your home. If you're moving into his place, you need to get yourself on that lease. Because what happens if you guys were to break up? He can kick you to the curb the next day. But isn't there liability if I go in and I get on that lease? Does that mean I'm potentially stuck with the rent? You gotta bet on love, Darren. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna stay together. I think it's more important to have those legal rights to right. stay in your place than to potentially worry about when you guys break up, you're gonna be on the hook financially. But that is a fact. You will be on the hook financially if you go on the lease because you should never count on the landlord just releasing you from that obligation. Mm. Why would they do that? Yes, they have not been struck by Cupid's arrow. <laughs> they may not be feeling so benevolent. So what else? What are some other tips and takeaways people Another should know about? Another big one that you should think about is don't let this ruin your credit. Maybe you mm. have great credit and the person you're moving in with doesn't. So first things first, talk about finances and decide who's paying for what. If you're gonna pay for cable and utilities, maybe they're paying for groceries, make sure those go in your name. Mm -hmm. If on the other hand, he's paying for uh, the electrical bill, that should go in his name. So if he forgets to pay, it doesn't ruin your credit. Interesting, interesting. All right, anything else we should keep in mind or are we just gonna focus on having a great Valentine's Day? <laughs> Just one more thing. Yes. Be on that same financial issue, because I don't want you to go in and ruin your credit, make sure you're comfortable with where you're moving into. A lot of people kind of get in over their head because they think, oh, well, I'm, there's two incomes coming together. We're really going to step it up a notch. Be cognizant of what the total rent is and consider, could I pay this all myself if something were to happen to that relationship? Boy, there is great comfort that only comes with living well below your means. <laughs> well, that's great. And we hope that some of those tips will keep you away from those crimes of passion and keep you off the crime couch. But in the meantime, please come back and see us again. On behalf of Annalise and myself, thanks for watching us here on the Crime Couch.